Hi friends, Steve here on another trip down memory lane in Palm Springs, California. And I'm here at the corner of Techiva and Miraleste. And I'm standing right in front of the house, or the former house, of Charles or Charlie Farrell, the actor who played the father on the TV show, My Little Margie. He used to live right here. And I'm gonna go find some shade here. And he's buried not far from here, just at the base of these hills or mountains right here in uh, downtown Palm Springs, and I'm gonna show you his gravesite next. So does anyone else besides me remember the 1950s TV show, My Little Margie? The Charles Farrell, who went by the name Charlie, was a leading man and silent film star back in the 1920s, and then easily made the transition to talkies in the 1930s. He was best known at the time for his on-screen romance with actress Janet Gaynor in more than a dozen movies. On Valentine's Day, 1931, he married actress Virginia Valley, who was also a silent film star, and they moved to Palm Springs. She appeared in nearly 60 silent films and just a couple of talkies before retiring from show business. In 1925, she appeared in The Pleasure Garden, which I believe was Alfred Hitchcock's very first film. She had quite the career, but to be honest, I had never heard of her. So I'm curious to know if any of you have. If so, please share with us in the comments section. Today, Palm Springs is famous worldwide for its mid-century modern residential architecture. But back in the 1920s and 30s, the most popular home style here was the Spanish Hacienda. The plaque in front of the house reads, Charlie Farrell Residence, completed in 1934, Spanish colonial revival, original architect unknown, actor and co-founder of the Palm Springs Racquet Club, Charlie Farrell and his wife, Virginia, lived here from 1952 until their deaths in 1990 and 1968, respectively. Farrell was mayor of Palm Springs from 1948 to 1953, and at the bottom it says the home was designated a Class I historic site, number 80, by the city of Palm Springs on September 3, 2014. This beautiful estate is located right across the street from the Desert Regional Medical Center, and if you watch my recent Dennis the Menace vlog, then you may remember that the hospital is built on the site of the former El Mirador Hotel. And in the 1920s and 30s, right around the time this home was built, just about every A-list movie star in Hollywood stayed and played right across the street at the El Mirador Hotel. And if you haven't already watched my home tours of Frank Sinatra, Bob Hope, and Cary Grant's homes, just search my channel to watch those. All three are located just a few blocks from this home. And look at this uh, beautiful mid-century modern home right next door to Charlie Farrell's. I don't know if anyone famous ever lived here, but it's a great example of a very nice mid-century modern home. And it's right across the street from a park here called Ruth Hardy Park. Lots of events, Palm Springs events are held here in the park. It's a great location, just uh, blocks from downtown. So before we head over to see their grave sites at the Wellwood Murray Cemetery in downtown Palm Springs, I want to show you a really neat memorial statue of Charlie Farrell at the Palm Springs Airport. I just happened to see it by accident the other day when I was at the airport. It's kind of one of those hidden in plain sight roadside attractions. And on the way I'll show you his street sign. Sadly, I would bet that most people who live here in Palm Springs today probably don't even know who Charlie Farrell was or that the street was named in his honor. When I accidentally stumbled across Charlie Farrell's statue here at the entrance to the Palm Springs Airport, I wondered why it was placed here. The city hall is across the street, and he was the mayor of Palm Springs from 1948 to 1953, so I just assumed that this was as close as they could get to City Hall. Then I read the plaque and it said that while he was mayor, he helped secure the return of the airport to the city of Palm Springs following World War II. Apparently it was used by the government during the war. The plaque also says that this bronze statue was created by artist and actor George Montgomery. I'm sure some of you will know that he was once married to Dinah Shore and they also lived just down the street from Farrell's former home. In my recent Eisenhower vlog, I talked about how the president brought golf to the desert and turned it into one of the most popular sports here. But long before Eisenhower arrived, Farrell helped make tennis the most popular sport here. And both sports are still very popular here today. So now let's head back to downtown Palm Springs to visit Farrell's gravesite. The cemetery is located on the corner of Vine Avenue and Alejo Road, 
And if you take Alejo Road from the airport, you pass Frank Sinatra's former Palm Springs home, which is just about a mile or so from the cemetery. And the architect who built Frank Sinatra's Palm Springs home is laid to rest right here, very close, to Charlie Farrell's gravesite. So as I mentioned earlier, this is the Wellwood Murray Cemetery in downtown Palm Springs. I'll turn around here. This street right here, if you just take it just uh, down to the end of the block, you'll be on Palm Canyon Drive, which is the uh, main street of Palm Springs. It's a very small cemetery. I've been here a few times before. You can check out those, those vlogs if you haven't already seen them. It's in a fantastic location. Right across the street from one of the very first golf courses and golf clubs here in Palm Springs. And Charlie Farrell and his wife Virginia are buried right there, just uh, two rows this side of the, uh, the stone wall. I mean, isn't this a great location? We have family friends who are buried here, but I think everyone who is buried here got in decades ago. They purchased their plots long, long ago because I don't think there are any more plots here available. Farrell died here in Palm Springs from heart failure at the age of 89 on May 6, 1990, just three months shy of his 90th birthday. His wife, Virginia Valley, also died here in Palm Springs. She died from a stroke at the age of 73 on September 24, 1968. She's been gone now for more than 50 years, and sadly her name on her headstone is starting to fade away. Hopefully some of her fans or friends and family will be watching this and will pay to have it cleaned and restored. And for those of you who have never heard of the My Little Margie TV show, it ran from 1952 to 1955 and was a summer replacement for I Love Lucy and later ran for decades in syndication, but seems to be one of those TV shows that has faded away a little bit over the years. The sitcom was set in New York City at the Carlton Arms Hotel, where 21-year-old Margie Albright lived with her widowed father, Vern Albright. Actress Gail Storm played Margie, and actor Charlie Farrell played Vern. Like a younger Lucy, Margie had a knack of getting into trouble that usually led to madcap capers. After the show ended, Gail Storm went on to star in her own TV sitcom, The Gail Storm Show, also known as Oh Susanna, and it ran from 1956 to 1960. Storm died in Danville, California at the age of 87 on June 27, 2009. Unfortunately for fans, she was cremated and has no final resting place to visit at this time. Last week in my President Eisenhower vlog, I shared with you how our search for an assisted living home for my mom was progressing. For a variety of reasons, we were not able to find an assisted living home that was able to take her at this time. So you like it, huh? Yeah, they are. They're real good. Really good. Kind of reminds you of the chocolate uh, shakes you had when you were a kid, right? Oh yeah. I used to have these like forever. Yeah, when you were a kid? Yeah. Now I can't believe you were able to get the top off yourself today. That's nice. Yep. That's good. We did luck out though and we found a caregiver out in her area who's now coming in to care for her every day. So if she can just hang in there until October when my brother Robert moves in with her full time, we should be good. But this really is a one day at a time adventure. So fingers crossed. This week I'd like to thank my latest Patreon supporter, Pat Johnson. Thanks Pat for your extra generous contribution. So until our next trip down memory lane together, happy travels everyone.